A black hole is an eerie place where those laws of physics we studied at school stop working. If a massive star runs out of its star fuel, it sometimes becomes super dense and buckles under its own weight, collapsing inward and bringing some space-time along. As a result, the gravitational field of this new object gets so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. That's how a black hole is born. But there's another theory that if there's a space object nothing can escape from, I'm talking about black holes, there must be something into which nothing can enter. And if you support the theory that black holes don't destroy any information, there must be a way for this information to come back out. So, can this something helping information escape be a white hole? So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. Another question is how white holes might form. One of the theories speculate that white holes could be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. Of course, no one has seen it, but inside a black hole, there's likely to be a long tube that's getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back. And then, this super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. You must be wondering now what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out. Quantum mechanics states that many things we perceive as continuous are actually granular. Let me give you an example. Light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So, if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size, and this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back, giving birth to a white hole. What matter might a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It'd probably be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. Black holes are known to absorb everything, matter and energy. As for white holes, they would expel them. Plus, black holes have an event horizon. Once you pass it, you can't turn back. As for white holes, they would have a reversed event horizon it would prevent anything from entering a white hole. There are other mysterious theories about white holes. For example, some people think they don't exist in our universe, but they do exist in another parallel universe. And it gets even better. There might be some kind of door that connects the black holes of our universe and the white holes of another universe. No one knows for sure whether white holes exist, but interestingly, for almost a century, the theory of general relativity predicted the existence of black holes. And still, many people didn't believe they could exist. And look at us now. We even have beautiful photos of black holes. So we're kinda in the same situation with white holes. It's pretty plausible that they do exist, but so far, they haven't been observed yet, and their existence hasn't been proven. But based on the very nature of white holes, assuming they were real, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to get too close to it, because it would push your spaceship away, preventing it from entering. Perhaps you would be able to hang out nearby, watching the white hole spitting stuff out, but nothing more. Maybe to travel through a white hole, you'd have to first enter a black hole. This process would be way easier, but much more terrifying, let me tell you. Let's choose a black hole first. Not to waste too much time and fuel, we'll take the closest one to Earth. This medium-sized monster lies about 1,000 light-years away. On the scale of the universe, it's just around the corner. More than four times the mass of our Sun, it's surrounded by streams of gas. One by one, gassy shreds send out the last flares of light before disappearing inside. There are two stars nearby one orbiting the powerful space object and the other moving around this inner pair. Scientists think this black hole might be the nearest to Earth. It's also the only star system that contains a black hole visible to the unaided eye. Finally, you reach your destination, the black hole itself. 
Its gravitational field is so powerful that even light, including X-rays, can't escape it. That's why the center of the black hole is pitch black. It doesn't mean you can't see the hole. This greedy thing consumes all the matter that strays too close, squeezing it into a superheated disk of glowing gas. The black hole also bends light around it, which creates a circular shadow. You approach this chaos of heat and gravity in search of the event horizon. Every black hole has an invisible line in the sand. Cross it and you won't be able to escape, even if you're a beam of light. Beyond the point of no return, the gravity is just too strong. But the big circle in the middle is bigger than the event horizon. Anything that approaches the black hole first goes into orbit around it. Once it happens, there's no way back. Whatever this object is, it'll end up being pulled into the hole. This region before the event horizon is called the photon sphere, and it looks like the black hole's shadow, even though it isn't. If you got there and somehow managed to stay in one piece, you'd be able to see the back of your head. The particles of light from your head would orbit around the black hole at immense speeds and come at you from ahead. Unfortunately, you wouldn't manage to pull it off. Once you started your journey towards the center of the black hole, the difference in acceleration between your head and feet would be many thousands of Earth's gravities. You would be spaghettified, but I'll tell you about that a bit later. First, the material gets caught in the black hole's orbit and is squeezed into a razor-thin spinning band. Friction, heat, electric and magnetic forces energize this disk, which makes the material glow intensely. The most massive black holes have such bright bands that they can outshine millions of galaxies. Inside this disk of glowing material, particles rub against one another. It slows them down and sends them straight towards the black hole's event horizon. If this friction didn't exist, the material would be orbiting the black hole for billions of years, like planets circle around their stars. Anyway, you eventually reach the so-called surface of the black hole. You can also call it the event horizon. It's not a real boundary or membrane. And you don't understand you've crossed it right away. It takes you several seconds to realize you won't be able to escape the black hole's clutches anymore. That's because the light, also trapped by the black hole's gravitational pull, is falling in along with you. It's not bright, but it's still there. The longer you fall, the more stretched, head to toe, you become. This process is what's called spaghettification. You also get squeezed around your midsection and the beams of light surrounding you form a glowing band about your waist. The last thing you see is darkness. It feels as if you're landing on a massive, empty, pitch black planet. What happens after that? You tell me. Can it be that you'll just come out of a white hole in another universe?